So today, uh, Raja, who is uh, an AI research engineer at Relicura uh, and also an expert in machine learning and intelligent systems, will talk about the deep learning approaches and ideas behind uh, classification algorithms, the challenges that are related to implementing these approaches to patent documents, uh, followed by a case study using Relicura's auto categorization tool. So we have we'll have more people joining us, uh, but I think we can we can start now. So I invite Raja to start uh, with his talk. Uh, also, uh, we will take questions at the end of the session. So either you can note your questions or you can ping us on the chat box. Uh, so once the session is over, we'll uh, keep some time for Q and A. Yes, Raja, you can begin now. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks, Rajini. Uh, Rajini, just uh, make sure, are you able to see my screen? Hello. Are yes, audible? yes. Can hear you. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Uh, OK, thank you. OK, first of all, I want to welcome everyone for the webinars. Today, I'm going to say a little bit about uh, how we are utilizing the power of AI in the field of patent categorization. So I will start with a small line say. Uh, the famous Mark Cuban said, like 2015 or so, at the beginning stage of AI, he mentioned the organization who are not going to use a deep learning AI will feel like a dinosaur after 10 years. So, so it, 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 that's how it started. Uh, at the beginning, yeah. Uh, so, so that is true. Every company nowadays want to, you know, utilize the power of deep learning. And deep learning, you know, uh, also has shown huge improvement in the last like eight nine years in the research field. So with the increase in data, the identifying the insects from the data become more important for any organization. So like every single company up there is using AI, and in our company Rilakura, we are actually using AI for patent analytics and you know IP intelligence. So I'll give a little bit of that later. So I'll just start with uh, my presentation. Just give me one bit. Yeah, so this is the content I'm going to tell today, a little bit about introduction to NLP and general document classification and how this has evolved in the history and what are the overviews about, you know, importance of this, that, and what is patent embedding, uh, you know, in the vector space, each patent will be considered as a single point. So if you want to find the closest patent uh, in the vector space, it is just a Euclidean distance between the two patents. But the patent embedding is the hard part. There, the, some deep learning approaches are there. Then as usual, what are the uh, machine learning approach and what are the deep learning approach, what are the difference, and RNN, LSTM, attention model, and the recent development in the graph-based model and Barrett transformer. Then matrices, then what is the result, and GPU framework, and you know, a little bit about our product uh, demo. So introduction. Text classification. Okay, first of all, why do we you know, need this text classification at the beginning you know, to start with? Let's say I have 100 books and I want to sort it in some order. Let's say I may feel I should have a category of, you know, fiction separate, uh, fiction books separate, technical books separate, sports books separate. Uh, but maybe my friend will prefer, you know, I don't want that. I want color basic. I want, you know, like a pink color books first, green color next. So the kind of category I want depends on the person. So how will I actually going to tell an AI, you know, this is the order I want. Okay, let's say if I say, you know, filter all the fiction documents and obviously my AI is going to, uh, and my AI is going to ask, okay, tell me what is fiction. Now I have to teach what is fiction. 
then i have to explain okay the fiction means character this 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 but again that is not enough actually it will ask what is english because all these are english then i have to teach a language so okay i will give my dictionary and i will say okay these are the english vocabulary learn it then it will ask how to form a sentence okay that is next problem sentence creation how to identify the sentence what is the structure because you know for human we know the language which is for easy let's you know take some you know unknown language you know let's say some latin and some language if i give some 10 latin document to you and i ask you to hey categorize it the first reaction will be okay what is this give me more detail so the model needs to be trained as a human our you know we have you know all the 25 years you know we have learned many experience many things you know small small thing so currently if you ask me to categorize it the way i categorize will be depends on all the knowledge i gathered in the last 25 years so the same way every a model needs a intelligent understanding of data so for that we have to train the data so yes that's you know that's the shorting and the text classification so that is you know consider a very important problem and um let's say not just the categorization the other questions can be we can you answer q and a if i ask you know one good example is there is an alexa is there and i am now i'm watching some avenger movie and if i ask the question of hey who is thor then it has to answer the question so to understand that question answer based then there is a topic model then there is a sentiment analysis so in general view text in nlp with deep learning is a huge field and it requires a huge intelligence of machine learning algorithms and plus data very important so nlp plus deep learning currently okay even nlp is been from what 1950s people started to talk about natural language processes how to build a intelligent system but why this current you know suddenly everything we have solved we seems like we have solved many problems you know at some degree because of the last you know 7 8 years deep learning architecture evolvement and their hardware support so what are the easiest medium and the hard problem what are the easiest problem you know in the nlp natural language understanding spelling check keyword search finding synonyms these are considered you know comparatively easy task then medium task is parsing the website or document those are considered as a medium task but what are the actual hard task is machine translation example translating uh, english to chinese or chinese to japanese you know because each language has its own structure own semantic uh, representation own lexical feature morphological feature phena uh, phonetic feature so all things we need to capture if you want to build a proper machine learning system uh, machine translation system it is considered say you know really tough problem then semantic analysis because semantic sentiment analysis and <laughs> core reference resolution let's say i'm giving you a story about something and I, i keep on referring he went to temple he went to jog he went to study so who does the he refer and he went there to take it it refers to what so that refer is who he refers to who it refers to so those information are uh, we need to capture it in any document so there's a called core reference model then there is a question answer based model like answering the question and say if i ask some question of who won yesterday's you know football match first of all i have to know there is a football match yesterday then i have to know i am asking you about you know yesterday like you know 10 games are there what is the you know which i am interested that thing then summarizing the long document summarizing is another hard task because the sentence creation the formation is easy for human to generate but for it's really considered a toughest problem for a hard problem uh, open ai has come up with a gpt3 model and people believe it is a you know some it did just generate the text well but it's a general text and if we want for particular application we need to tune this and we are still not there that's what i'm trying to say then last classification of pattern based on semantic content again we need to capture the semantic information that is that is very crucial semantic capturing is you know 
for human it is easy to understand okay if i say uh, table book pen these are related but for machine to understand this we have to train the model so these are like a overview of what are the application can be available in nlp so what is this with the machine learning approach you know we are used and asking machine learning is best obvious question would be what is special in that so what is special in that is the classical approach i will have the data and i will have the rules i will tell hey this is the data this is the rules do this let's say i have you know on excel sheet i will say find the list of people whose age is less than 50 i can just write on case less than 50 fill the return give that is classic programming but the classic programming cannot solve our problem because we have a huge data and i cannot write a rule particular rule let's say if i want to you know research a patent about let's say semiconductor i will say hey give me the document you know uh, best 10 semiconductor patent and the first question is okay semiconductor patent does the word semiconductor is good enough to capture the patent no it is not because semiconductor word that's the two word is not enough then i have to know semiconductor means silicon germanium all this are included then that is also not enough semiconductor devices so what are the devices available and out of all the devices which one i have to pick first i cannot pinpoint a rule to identify that because let's say i have millions of document i a single rule cannot solve the problem that's why machine learning so what it is i will give you like you know 100 documents of semi, uh, semiconductor i will say hey take this kind of document you know this is about semiconductor find some intelligence report from it then use that to categorize my other 1000 documents so in that case i'm forcing my model to learn the insights from the 100 documents uh maybe that 100 documents will have about silicon germanium semiconductor device you know uh, application battery everything will be there so you may ask okay 100 is not good enough or not no cannot we cannot say 100 is not enough if i give 200 it will be better and 300 will be better so we need to have some trade off okay this is what number i have you know based on this you train so actually machine learning system will actually learn from the training data see these are the 100 documents you gave me these are the things i have identified and based on this knowledge i will categorize your document that's the whole idea of machine learning approach here the machine learning approach works when there is a you know ordinary rules cannot be done so overview about that then you know it's always a confusion what is artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning you know even i have come across many times you know you know i have kept like a venn diagram kind of thing you know inside inside some of my friends may say no you have to put this one you know little bit intersection of this and you know how to come out say i mean it's it's again uh person's choices and artificial intelligence is the whole unit that has a uh, then inside that there is a machine learning then there is a deep learning so what's it okay a is a full screen then we don't have to think about you know okay then what's the difference between deep learning and machine learning um okay i'll give an example the explainability of the machine learning algorithm is really important you know it is considered to be really important you know before this deep learning thing let's say if i'm building some classifier or something and i'm using like say naive bias i will know okay this distribution is this distribution is contributing to my naive bias classifier so that explainability will be there and the boundary condition all this let's say if i use svm i can actually put the, some support vectors and i can actually find the boundary between the class separations but that explainability will not come with a deep learning because deep learning i would say it is a um, function approximation you give some documents it will approximate that function but that function cannot be represented with a single equation yeah that's a uh, function approximation so what's the problem with that if you don't have the enough data deep learning will almost always will overfit your data so deep learning will work only when you have large data and those data cannot you know the pattern cannot be identified by other algorithms in that case deep learning outperform and especially in our you know patent search or patent landscape the number of patents are really really huge and the distribution of the patent across the um, you know distribution of words distribution of 
categories. It's all clustered. There is no specific pattern. I cannot use just the SVM to classify that. I cannot use just the naive bias to classify that because I need more information than that. And that information I cannot give. And also that embedding, that's where the embedding part comes. So I will give, I will, I will explain about that a little bit further uh, into the presentation. So, so that's the overview. There is an AI. Then there is a machine learning. Machine learning, you give the data, we will give the results. That is machine learning. And the machine learning will have so many algorithms. So deep learning is not the only one. SVM, uh, naive bias, KNN, you know, like I can number you know, 15, 20. You know. Then deep learning, when you have large data and it's really difficult to say, you know, look for this feature. And then in that case, deep learning will be useful. So what are the complexity available? Yes, uh, in general, any any NLP document, any classification, or in general, any natural language class, what are the complexities? Identifying the novel words. So first of all, let's say, let's say there is a document about uh, latest GPU from NVIDIA. The way I see will be different from the way, uh, let's say the person with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, medicine background have because the because when I know what is GPU, what is this uh, Nvidia, CUDA framework, the way I choose words will be completely different from let's say the person who have background from medical science. Their words they will not able to capture that. So our model has to you know learn this information from the data, and that's where you really have to give the training data bias variance straight up. The more variance you have, the more your, day, your model will learn. So identifying the novel words, that's one complexity. And semantic word similarity, let's say the word pen and pencil. I know pen and pencil are relatively close. I can use poor words writing. But how will my machine knows? It, uh, as far as a machine knows, this is just one word. This is just one word. So how will I capture the word similarity? And semantically, I have to capture just to able to say, if you are talking about a phone, yes, both are uh, you know similar. That information has to come. But if I talk about something like you know, other than that, Apple juice versus Samsung, well, that is different. So now semantically, it is different. So that information need to capture. Then repetition of words, especially the stop words, some of the words are you know, so much repeating. Just because the article like you know A, D, and repeating in the document doesn't mean this are important to us. So the repetition we need to capture, uh, we have to know when to capture, when to avoid it. Because let's say if there is a patent is about uh, something like, you know, machine learning algorithms, then I will be care about algorithms, then article. So we need to know when to capture the words, when to reject the repeated words. Then look at, looking at named entities. Yeah, uh, named entities, again, if I say Apple, uh, and if there is an article about apple company or apple fruit and if both comes in the same sentence and my model has to know with surrounding sentence what it actually means and named entity let's say again he she it we use uh, that information we need to capture then what we want story paid exactly like model okay the way people see uh, deep learning different different the way i see is it's just a mathematical equation what it wants, I mean, let's say it's just a number it, it can give. But if I ask, you know, give me the story, give me the patent, give me keywords, give me, the, my model doesn't know that. I have to, you know, explicitly, explicitly, you know, design for that. So it's not a general, you know, one algorithm cannot solve all the problem. So we need to have different approach for different, different use cases. So that one. Then focus on most important media, especially let's say if I talk about the bank, whether I should, I'm talking about the river bank or the cash bank. And in the particular sentence, let's say I have a big document, there is only once the uh, bank is referred, and there is no other reference about bank, and I'm just keep on saying JP Morgan or something. So my model has to, uh, you know, identify these two are, you know, a little bit close, you know, I'm talking about that. So in the given document, what is important? That information we need to capture, that comes under, that, that is another complexity. Then semantic structure, semantic structure and syntactic structure, because let's say the, the words which I write is completely different from people, let's say, who, are, who write poems. 
the semantic ways both will be same because i went to you know play there was raining it was good weather you know that's what how that's how i will write but if i give to some poet or person who are really good at writing they they will give more information this that but semantically both are but uh, you know similar but the way it is represented is different so our ai system should be able to you know match this two also then content vector distribution yes uh, content vector distribution especially same like the word distribution then sentence boundary yeah in our patent the single sentence will be much longer when compared with a news article a sentence so in that case a sentence boundary and the sentence length matters because let's say if i train everything based on news article and suddenly if i give patent document and ask some, give me some insight then obviously my model is going to get confused because it has never seen such a long se- sentence and i'm giving three four you know uh, sentence in combined in a single sentence so that is on complexity aware then again the very important complexity is computing power since the data is huge the computing power we need really really huge so computing power is another complexity then approach for a categorization uh, as usual what are the three ways rule based statistic based machine learning based so what are the uh, application Uh, we need we have to derive from either semantic syntactic or morphological or lexical so for any text classification these are the three major field either if you take any algorithm that will fall in any one of this category and if you take the last two five year algorithm most probably all will go into the machine learning i mean 90% of the thing and and uh, yeah so that's a uh, different types of approach uh, m- mostly we will be ba- discussing about a uh, machine learning based approach you know so what is the, you know let's give the overview of text classification um, block diagram so what happens i have a what's my goal here give the document you give me the training document i will learn then you give me the test document i'm going to say so initially when i give the raw text obviously i need to pre process um the pre process reinvolves like you know five six steps especially you know removing stop words stemming lamination uh, finding the structure parse tree so those are kind of pre process so once the pre process is done uh, either we will go the shallow, shallow learning is considered you know machine learning the one which i told machine learning we will extract the feature then we will put it to the classifier deep learning we will just give the sequence to sequence model i'll just give the raw text and the label whatever happening in series of blocks so deep learning approach so what happens in the shallow learning initially okay i removed all the pre process i did the all the pre process i removed all the stop words this is everything then now i have to say capture the features but what kind of features uh, to extract the feature again there are like you know 8 10 methods important methods are available one of the famous one is back of words in the tf idf tf idf is a uh, time frequency inverse document frequency the what it gives is for this particular document how important the word is let's say the word uh, let's say you are giving 10 you know 100 training documents to me and they were telling 50 belongs to category a 50 belongs to category b and the model has to learn so he in this case for one uh, again each document is going to have uh, n number of words so each word how many it is important for the document with respect to all the document so that features will be captured by tf idf so once we capture that then we will be having some embedding uh, because all the algorithms runs on number we have to find a way to the numbers it will be like a big vector okay so each pattern will be represented like you know uh, one cross 100 dimension numbers so whatever the pattern you are going to give me i'm going to give you a 100 diamond 100 numbers for each pattern so once it embedding is done i will give it to the classifier again which classifier should i use it is fully problem based you know we have to do all the fine tuning and uh, where, when should use which algorithm that also is there. let's say if your model is like linearly separable a single perceptron can solve your problem but it is like mixed but there is some kind of boundary separation then you can go for svm and in svm then you can represent a support vector then you can use a kernel trick then you can use a, you know i mean that's svm approach 
then if you feel like you know you know uh, um, that is not enough i may have some kind of you know probably this distribution then in that case you may look into a new base or uh, in new base okay the distribution of this let's say i know so at the end i am going to get one matrix if i have 100 pattern and each pattern will have 100 numbers my dimension is going to be 100 cross 100 so in the pattern space it's also a dot so you are going to see a 100 dot in the pattern space which is a 100 dimension space so in the high dimensional space visualization cannot be you know easy and there so we cannot tell whether it is you know which classifier is better you know again it's a, we have to you know try different different algorithms and which works it then there is a decision tree random forest uh nearest neighbor nearest neighbor is simple like if you want to know uh, let's say i have one new patent coming and i want to know whether it belongs to class a or class b uh, neighbor ne, ne, nearest neighbor algorithm will identify the closest patent let's say the again in the patent space which is a 100 dimensional space just just imagine okay it's a 100 dimension space each patent is a document and there is some some cluster is there here are all the semiconductor patents are there here all the uh, let's say chemistry patents are there so in that case when the new patent comes if this patent is you know uh, graphically close to this one means you have to tell okay you have more neighbors from semiconductor so you belongs to semiconductor category category so that is that is a shallow learning you take the features then you give the classifier then the classifier will learn the model so that is shallow learning and deep learning is i'm not going to you know give the features i'm not going to tell look for itf idf maybe tf idf doesn't bother your model maybe for the given data just if you you know some other feature may be useful you know instead of tf idf i can just find 2x square of you know tf idf by 7 times tf idf uh, root of something like that in a complex manner so that number i cannot measure because in the shallow learning you can come and ask me you say tf idf is going to give a good classification uh, you know good feature to extract and you may ask why it has to be you know tf idf why not something else that question will be answered by deep learning and after that that's why it is considered as a black box it has the ability to identify the pattern but that pattern what exactly it is looking for we don't know so it is considered as a black box but the ability to learn from the data and the function approximation will be really done we done by deep learning is better than shallow learning especially when your training document is high so in deep learning again in the last 5 years you now we can write you know more than 1000 papers have done just in the this field so especially you know we'll start with the perceptron learning cnn rnn uh, resnet model you know skip network Uh, attention model, birth model, transformer, this, that, you know, it has come. So this is the diagram. There is a two type. Either you take the feature, do the classifier, get the result, or you use the sequence to sequence deep learning model. Okay. Now this is learning, and how it actually looks in the pipeline, in the classification. So classification pipeline. This is how it looks like initially in the uh, just okay. Just look here. Look here. so there is a training document i am going to give let's say 1000 training document and i know all the 1000 documents where it belongs out of the 1000 let's say i have 10 classes and that information i will give then the features are extracted here then this feature and the label are used for the machine learning algorithm once a machine learning algorithm learned it will be saved in model so initially we will evaluate initially this will be like you know when you give the first training data it will be wrong so this process repeat happens so this loop happens again and again this is where the learning happens and this machine learning algorithm will learn the data then once the training is done the model will be we will be having the model so at the end of the training the model file is all we care in the deep learning all the models are weight from the neural network architecture so once i have the model then my new data comes next time giving the new patent and the same feature extraction i have to give and with that same feature and this my model we are going to predict a model you know predictive model so from this we'll predict the final labels so this is actually pipeline for the classification so i, I hope i give it clear there is a training document and label you give model will learn once the model is learned you save it as a model that model will be used when the new data comes we will extract the feature use the model combine this to predict the model yeah 
So let's look at the history. Again, I always like to look at the history for any algorithm because history teaches you, you know, how hard it is, you know, how luxurious, you know, we are like, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a text classification from scratch now. It's really impossible to reach whatever they have reached in the whole history. So it's, you know, it, it's, I think we have to thank all the people who have worked in text classification in the past 50 years, you know, because of them we are here. So it's, it's a history. Um, initially, the text classification, they started in 1961. Then 1967, they started implementing KNN. Then there is a Leo, then they used to see it's a slow, like, you know, seven years, six years. If you want some good, you know, like a huge improvement, it takes like a years and years to get it. So, but when we reach 2011, every year we are getting some breakthrough. So that is a difference actually what happened in the last 10 years, you know, or, and versus the last 50 years. We can actually see from this diagram. So last 50 years, these are the breakthroughs and the last, I mean, 50 years here. Then from 2011, this Richard Sarkar is a very famous researcher from Stanford. They come up with an idea of using deep learning. Then again, all from the literature because he was the one who started it with the Manning, those group people, really, really amazing people there. So they come up with a different idea of approaching a text classification using a deep learning, RNN, CNN, text CNN, paragraph vector. Here is what paragraph vector, then XG boost, and text RCN, and tree LSTM, fast rank, fast text. So then the last two years, all the BERT and transformers will be there. I have a GPT. Yeah, yeah, here is a GPT, 2018. Now, I think 2019 GPT-2, this year, to GPT-3. Uh, the, I think the model is becoming really huge and huge, and it is, and it's really, really good. Uh, so this is like a history, and uh, Pattern to vector embedding. So I was telling about we have to you know convert a text into the numbers. Only then we can do anything you know further to give the classification. So pattern to vector I have to represent in a pattern space. So I have a word embedding. So how the embedding works? First for each patent for each text I have to embed into some words. So that is what patent text to word embedding. Let's say my patent is having 100 words. All the 100 words will have the corresponding uh, vector space. Then using that 100 vector space, I will find the vector space for my patent. So the initial level of this one is embedding. So we call it a uh, word embedding. So how, how it is what actually it does. So this is model. First, we look at this, this diagram. So there is a data. That's a black and white, you know, that's a different class. So the embedding, what happens, I told embedding can be, you know, it's a n dimension vector. Let's say if it is a hundred dimension space, in hundred dimension space, the data will be like, you know, there will be some cluster of all the chemicals at some point, all the chemical names at some point, all the books names at one side, you know, that's what actually happened. Once we have the embedding, um, how do I say that? Once we train with all the text uh, from the training set, we come up with a word embedding. That word embedding in the vector space will be look like that. Just for visualization, we just reduced it to two dimension, just using PC, and we are looking at it. So from this, we can actually see, uh, look at this number. These are all chemical names. So from this cluster, I can say all the chemical names are going in some this cluster. And if I look this side, all the chemical names like potassium, sodium, nitrogen, copper are coming this side. So next time when the word comes like, you know, triphenol, three, four, uh, you know, methylene, something like that, I know that word is going to be close here. So if the word close, is close to this one, it belongs to this cluster. So that information is very crucial for the embedding. That's the whole point because I, I want to, you know, in a, I cannot do this with just, you know, writing a rules for that because if you have to write the rules, how, how do I do that? Like find the, first of all, I have to, you know, define this. this. So, so that's what, that, that's what patent embedding, that's what the bird embedding does. So from the bird embedding, we can get the patent embedding because with the patent embedding is the embedding of, you know, bird embedding. So how the structure works here. So let's say this one. Uh, this is a small uh, neural network model of how it works for the embedding. So, 
Okay, I think I will give a neural network first, then it will be easy to understand. We will represent each word in the one heart representation. Let's say if my training set is having, say, like 10,000 words, I will represent the particular word at one, the rest of the place I will represent to zero. Same base goes here. So this is my input, and then I will give my neural network. Then I will optimize to identify the closeness between these two vectors. That's a contest vector. Then it will identify. Uh, whether it belongs to cathode category or electrochemical category or thin or is it a property or is it a magnetic. So, so yeah, so this is the representation in the, you know, for using PCA, first component, second component. So embedding that is. So then that, that is embedding. Then another is now a parsing tree and the probabilistic graphical model. This is the one I mentioned about like uh, entity recognition. Uh, named entity recognition is, okay, look at this sentence. President of China on his first state visit to US, blah, 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 blah. Other thing is there. So when I look at this one, what are the things I have to identify? United States is a location. And this is a person's name. And China is a location. First is an ordinal. Tuesday night is a date. I have to capture these information first. So to identify this information, we are using named entity recognition. Again, it's a separate neural network model uh, to get the named entity recognition. And co-reference, uh, let's say, look at the same sentence here, showed up his familiarity. So this his actually refers to this person who the president of China. So this connection I have to capture. So that will be captured using the co-reference module. This is another neural network model. Again, there are so many models for this one based on its accuracy, data, all that, and co-reference model. Then what is a dependency? Dependency will capture the uh, structure of the sentence. Let's say in a grammatical structure, how it looks like. Again, uh, precedent is this is a compound, this is a noun, this is a connection. Let's say this is a subject, uh, this person and where this connection is going and compound, you know, on this are article, you know, this information, this sentence structure is really important. And there is a huge field based on that. If you come across something called probabilistic graphical model, let's say, I can ask the question, like once it is trained, if I say Donald Trump and, uh, you know, Donald Trump is the president of Dash, if I give and, you know, ask to fill the Dash, it will come up with the name United States. That is actually probabilistic uh, graphical model because instead of Trump, if I uh, change to, um, say, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is a president, I don't know. CEO of Tesla. So in that case, instead of United States, going to put Tesla. So in the so this is a probabilistic. So for a given word, what this is going to change. So presence of this word is going to affect the what word is going to come. So this information will be coming from probabilistic graphical model. Yeah. So then yeah, categorizing using the tree. So this is a decision tree based model. So once we have an embedding, we can use a decision tree. So this is a machine learning approach. The approach is what you give the data, uh, do the pre-process, do the feature extraction. Once the feature is extracted, you use, use the algorithm. So this is a algorithm classifier after the feature extraction. So here there will be a label and there is a tree formation and each node will decide whether you know it belongs to this side, this, and it will finally, it will say which class it belongs to. So random forest actually works in the same way, except that instead of one tree, they will have multiple tree. At the end, they will take the word and they will decide the final class. Uh, this is a decision tree based model. And there is a KNN based model. Exactly, this is the same thing I told. Uh, in the high dimensional space, the vector space, 100 dimensional space, each circle is a patent. So let's say all the blue dots belongs to, you know, I have two kinds of patent. I want to uh, classify semiconductor patent versus, uh, uh, you know, um, electric vehicle, uh, two kinds of patent. So yellow is one class and the blue is one class. But in the normal space, we cannot classify this. So we are using K nearest neighbor or we can use a kernel trick because, you know, when you do the kernel trick, the boundary become, you know, changes. So KNN will pick the uh, base run. Let's say if I want to know this one, I will say you have the three classes belongs to blue category and one belongs to yellow, then pick the blue one. So here I can say that. And this one is similar like a uh, SVM kind of, the boundary is not, uh, you know, linear here. But when I do the kernel trick and if I go to the high dimension, 
I am actually able to use this with a single plane. That's a, another classifier model. Then, then comes a neural network model. Yeah, we are running out of time. Yeah. So, okay, those are whatever I have told her. You take the feature, then you implement the classifier. So far, what are I discussed? Now I am going to say about the neural network. So, what is a neural network here? Neural network is just a function approximation. I'm going to give the input, and these are my labels. All the weights will be learned as a hidden features. We will not know what this W1, W2 is capturing. So this information will be captured. And neural network has a huge, huge ability to find the hidden pattern, which is really difficult for any other predefined feature extraction algorithm can take. So the whole model idea is this. And there, from the predicted one, we will have a loss function. From the last, we will find the uh, back propagation last from for each node, then we will back propagate. So the idea is it will go up front, feed forward, feed backward, feed forward, back propagation. So this process keep on going. At the end of n number of epochs, we will actually obtain the clo global minimum. So okay, I think this is the meme. The whole idea of neural network is optimization. I have to identify some optimum point that uh, that way my loss is low and depends on the cost function. So that's the whole idea of a neural network. This is a simple neural network. And what uh, next step is a convolution neural network. So convolution neural network, what happens? In the neural network, I'm going to give one by one. The, again, each word will be uh, one heart represented. Let's say if I have a thousand number of words total, if I want to say the, only for that particular index, it will be one. The rest of the place, it will be zero. So it will be a one heart representation. And if I give this three, meaning I'm going to give three cross n dimensional vector to the model. So what happens with the convolution? Convolution will capture not only the particular word, but the previous and the next words are important to tell about, uh, you know, to get the nice feature. Let's say this example, the quick brown uh, fox. So we will just take the training samples, you know, here we are using bigram. Uh, two, 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 we'll take. So the and quick the. So this information, this information it will learn. So convolution neural network will take advantage of the closest word also, not just one particular word. Give me the word which is previous and next to you so that I will get more patterns from that. So usually how it works, there will be a convolution layer. Then when we do the convolution, then there is a pooling layer. I mean, when we do the convolution, the dimension will be reduced. So to overcome that, we have to put padding layer. Once the padding layer is done, then we will have a pooling layer. Then again, convolution. Then there will be a connected, fully connected layer. Then again, pooling layer. So this is a small architecture to represent how the convolution neural network works. Again, so many research have been done. There is some dropout they will use to avoid overfitting when the data is less. And there is something called uh, uh, pruning will be there. Pruning means uh, shutting down some of the neural network nodes at some points. Then RNN versus CNN. So, okay, we saw the just a neural network. Then we saw convolution neural network. Then comes a RNN. So deep learning will capture the before and after, but it don't have the memory cell. And it cannot have the hidden state of, like let's say, look at the, you know, let in the RNN, I can say, keep track of last five words you saw. So what's the idea here? If I'm giving a full sentence, it is going to remember what is the last four words that you gave. Not just the first one and the, you know, one back and one friend. It is going to remember like a, whatever the number I am going to give. So when this, all this happens, this and all will be in the hidden state. So in the RNN, before you know computing label, the whole hidden state will be there. So these hidden state have the ability to remember, uh, you know, the thing words which came like you know n number of n steps before. So one advantage is here we can give any number of length for the three process, and here model size is not depends on the input size because. In, in the CNN, if your model, you know, input size is increasing, obviously the tensor dimension is going to increase. When the tensor dimension increases, the whole network size increases. But in RNN, doesn't happen because we do all this first, then we give it to the next layer. So, and weights are shared across time because I'm, I told, I look at the last five, uh, you know, n minus five steps. So it is going to keep track of all the weights and, you know, things it saw in the last five one. That's the advantage of RNN. So then what happened next? When RNN is working fine, people come up with an idea of LSTM. What LSTM has more of uh, RNN is it actually have a specific memory cell. What it does, 
uh, in rnn it cannot have the ability to learn or remember things which happened let's say 100 steps before but i want to capture that 100 steps before whatever happened because maybe that is what the more important thing is so people come up with the idea of uh, lstm in lstm there is a specific a uh, memory cell will be there that that will keep track of whatever happened in the last you know number of you know, trainings before and it has a forget gate and output gate input gate so this structure you know this is a lstm and the uh, groove model is derived from lstm that has one more benefit out of it so, so this is a rnn and then lstm then people come up with an attention model so this is the last 3 4 years uh, you can actually look at this example here when i say one word what actually it stresses the previous word let's say this is uh, the fbi chasing a criminal and run now with the word is the d is going it's a first word so i cannot look back what has happened then fbi is going next so the red color word is what is actually going into the model now and all this previous things are will be remembered by the attention model so when i give the chasing word when the chasing word is going it's actually stressing more on fbi and when a is going it is more on chasing then there is a criminal on the run so at the end of the final sentence we can actually see uh, we can see the fbi is chasing the criminal so at the end what our model actually remembers is chasing criminal run it doesn't care about on or the or fbi or is fbi is important if the run is not matter fbi is chasing a criminal means i have to capture fbi chasing criminal but he is on the run so run chasing criminal these are the things my attention model is going to remember so attention model the whole idea is this in a sentence find me the word or you know text which i have to focus where i should give more weightage that is where the attention model so this this is has a huge benefit because in the patent let's say if you know initially they mentioned about something called you know uh, wearable watch then i have to know that word is going to be important for rest of the document and if the word is even not repeating i should be able to capture that information so for that attention model is really really useful then there is a graph based model i really a big fan of graph based model Uh, especially because of its more you know probabilistic way of giving the result here all the nodes and words are you know it's like a connected in a uh, in a you know like a huge graph think like it's a, a graph network like a big forest each patent is connected with something with some text so here if i give you the four document let's say four patents i'm giving t1 t2 t3 and t4 and the graph model has the ability to you know connect the graphs and words let's say see t1 and t2 are very close related so they are connected but t1 and t2 um, let's say t1 to t4 i can find the root from here t1 to x4 then to x3 then through this i can come to t4 and i can go this way t3 x4 x5 x5 then t4 so the idea is so here all the x's are uh, words uh important words which connected to with that particular t1 text so so what happens here is the model has the ability to learn which word has the ability to you know connect these two patent let's say if one patent is about uh, battery another is about uh, car, you know tesla car something like that now the so there are certain words which will make this two patent close because if i talk about you know um lithium ion so lithium ion battery is going to use here also here also so in that case that particular word has more important to identify this uh, this two patent closenessness so this graph based information like recently this graph neural network is uh really getting famous actually so that's what graph based model it has ability to find the which are the nodes are very important like which patent and another patent are linked through which are the words so you know this information is really useful and we don't define the structure the structure will be learned from the training documents that's important thing so and the, this is the last one out of all the models which i showed and this is a latest bert model so this is the example i told you let's say i arrived at the bank after crossing the river so in this sentence uh, the bank is either the river bank or the just the bank 
so the press, uh, that i will decide based on the word river so that if the word is river instead of river if there is a road i arrived at the bank after crossing the road means i most probably my model is going to think this is a cash bank where we put money that bank but the tr- presence of this word river actually changes the uh, whole meaning of the sentence because the river represent okay you might have crossed the river and you know river bank you have reached so this information to capture that bert model and transformer models are really really useful again uh, this is just an example we can do lot of things with the transformer bert model is derived from transformer again same like a gpt gpt just is a huge huge amount of data and it has its own structure uh, again there is a sub- i think recently also some paper came in the bert uh, patent bert the model based only on the patents so okay these are the models available and these are the models we are actually using and some of the models it takes really months to train the model uh, you know given the millions of patent documents and it's, it's, a, it's a huge once we can achieve it and you know the application is really really huge uh, if we can make a generalized to one um, that would be really good from the gpt model actually so okay now i have the model now i have identified everything now what is the metrics i'm going to measure okay uh, let's say same for the classification i gave 100 documents you classify this then i'm going to give that uh, uh, test document you are going to tell so what are the different matrices we can match um exactly the exact match okay either we, do we get what you expected or there is a hamming glass there is a jacket similarity so these are the metrics let's say uh, let's say you have like you know 15 classes out of the 15 classes five classes are little bit close let's say one is about electronics another one is about semiconductor another one is about battery uh, another one is about some you know motherboard uh, design so it's very very close so here i cannot expect a 100% accuracy so i will be happy you know you um, instead of giving in the semiconductor uh, if you put in the electronic devices that patent i'm happy i'm okay with that so the kind of information uh, jacket similarity will be used now the final question will be a uh, result okay all this we spoke i know patent classification this algorithm and how will i give the result whether you know like Just, just give the result uh, it's not simple how much accuracy you will get because the result depends on so many factors accuracy is depends on i cannot simply say my model is giving 90% accuracy you know i just ran on some document because it is going to depends on you know i just mentioned 10 but it is more than 10 let's say length of the patent we have ran all you know we tried all this different kind of uh, uh, you know different approaches and factors affecting the accuracy one is length of the patent let's say you train all the model which has you know patent uh you know length wise it's small but if it increases then again it affects the model accuracy then length of each paragraph the number of unique words in the training set number of yeah number of patents you are giving bias variance trade off let's say you are giving some you know biased information so if the training is biased obviously model is going to be biased Uh, that's why in the training data there has to be a variance it should be there uh, and also the bias varying trade off should be there then what is the number of epochs because see, here we are talking about like you know when i when we run for you know let's say uh, summary model or something we run for like a 10 million documents for each document one epoch will be it will run for like month on the high computing machine so yeah so in that case number of epoch matters and the patent embedding vector dimension because embedding is really really crucial because i said 100 you may ask why 100 i can use 1000 i can use 2000 dimension yes that embedding dimension for one patent i am going to represent in one cross 100 dimension or one cross 200 one cross, that matters and if the vector dimension increases your tensor size is going to increase if your tensor size is increase then your model size is going to increase then if the model size is big your hardware requirement will be high and if that is high uh, that will take the more training also it's it's a huge it's like a, you know change action or if you increase this everything happens then vocabulary size of the database so, uh, so how many words you want let's say if i look the patent uh, you know uh, like uh, 10 years before i would have no uh, not found any word close to say gpt3 
but now it will be there because the uh, evolution of new vocabulary so how how much vocabulary have to give importance then attention weight and distribution again uh, how much weight and window size so there are many uh, factors that actually affect accuracy so it's hard to pinpoint we have 100% or you know 90% accuracy it's a uh, it changes with this all these parameters yeah so these are from this and and the deep learning framework i think we are running out of time let's go through first um, i mean frameworks obviously the go to option is either tensorflow or pytorch the research work for uh, if you are going into research uh, oriented one pytorch is a go to option um, tensorflow is good for for both research and production so, so tensorflow is a winner here as of now <laughs> so again what are the feature we can extract from that i told uh, dependency parsing lemmaization n gram extraction verb class cluster named equities pos tagging metadata extraction tokenization uh, encoding feature selection so these are the features so yeah that's all from all the latest uh, you know things available there uh, i'll just a little bit uh, give our the new tool uh, our relacura is having a huge database of all like, you know Data and uh, under their metadata, and most of the data we collect are here. You know, name recognition, segmentation, lexical feature. These are semantic feature and domain specific feature. I.e., so all this information we have, and we have our own patent embedding also. And so how our model works is, you have the two testing and training data. So the right side one is the test data. Uh, you give the Excel sheet of all the patents you want to. Let's say I have given. 15 15 15 uh, 15 patents belongs to chess category uh, board games uh, all recent alpha zero all those patents related to that and the next 15 patent belongs to tv uh, latest some papers then there is something about chemicals so i'm going to give this 45 documents to my model and i'm going to say learn learn this pattern so when i do this what i we actually doing is we are going to embed each patent we have a patent embedding based on the uh, our database so once the patent is embedded then that is our feature then we use a classifier neural network to do the classification so once a model is created the model will be ready then you have to give a test document so this is the training document i have you have given the target also this patent this category next you are going to give these are the patent give me each patent where it belongs so that we you will be giving so this is how the tool look initially there will be just you know at initially there will be nothing you just have to either create the model or categorize the patent so initially you will click the create model it will ask you to upload the file you have to upload the your training file in the format which we shown before then you have to give the model name then you have to click the create model so once you give the create model your model will be created so this model is currently is there is based on the 45 training documents which i gave so once a model is created now you have to go to category categorize patent so when you go to the category when it will ask you to upload the test file means give me only the patent number file and you you can create the you have to select the model let's say you, you can have multiple model you can choose which model you want and you can give a categorize so once you give that we will okay picture is not clear actually so from each class we will tell so i gave 15 uh, test document so out of the 15 five uh, belongs to chess five belongs to tv four uh, belongs to chemical and one belongs to other so this is the result from the model a model which is telling to us uh, since i gave the model i know uh, where, which one belongs to which so i know i have given 555 from each category uh, and it is belong it is putting this one in the others category because my model believes what based on your training data this one particular uh, patent i cannot put it anywhere so each patent so whatever i gave it is the this is the test document i just gave the patent number and for this patent it is telling you this one belongs to chess category this five belongs to this and this five belongs to tv so next page i think i didn't have the next page yeah so so next page there will be remaining five and that other category if my model feels the patent which you give does not belongs to any of these three category we will put in the others category for the further investment so this is the, our categorization tool and it is powered by like our relicura 
uh, and the patent embedding done by a patent to work, uh, which we have a database for that from which is we have like a 10 million documents we are trying for that. So yeah, thank you so much for that. And this is upcoming. We are planning to have some of the training kind of thing. So IP principle and patent search, how to do it with our tool, it will be October 6, 13 and 20. And IP intelligence for business, November 3, 10 and 17. And the, the last one, I think I will be coming back again for the last one, the AL, NL, and MLP approaches in the IP tool. So these three days, we will have some webinar or something, um, then interactive session. So we will just showcase this one. And uh, if any questions from the customers or user, or if, if anybody from the business field, they feel uh, some you know intelligent report, can you generate or anything like that, you can discuss with this. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think that's all from my side. Um, yeah. Yeah, five o'clock. Yeah, questions are welcome. Uh, I'm open for question. If you have any question, you can ask in the chat, or you can directly ask me also. I'll I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Raja. That was a very informative uh, session, loaded with a lot of content. Uh, so, if anyone has any questions, uh, probably we can take it for like a couple of minutes. Or otherwise, uh, you can also write to us uh, if you have any uh, questions that you want answers to. Yeah. Okay, I guess uh, <laughs> there are no uh, questions. Then we can we can end the call here. Um, hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question. Um, yeah. So deep learning works better and better with a larger data set. So hypothetically, if we can feed all this data available in the internet to deep learning model, how far okay. you think can we push the ability to learn? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's really a good question, actually. Mm, okay. Deep learning works uh, better with larger data. Yes, that is true. Uh, okay, so the answer to that question is unknown. <laughs> and if you ask my answer to that, not as much mm -hmm. as uh, up to like how human do that. We can do it for specific application oriented. For example, if I, let's say I'll give an example actually. Okay, uh, I have okay. the calculator. Uh, if you ask me to multiply seventy six into seventy five. It is tough for me, but I can, my calculator can do that. So doesn't mean my calculator is, you know, intelligent way than me. Same way, as a general intelligent machine, we cannot make it. But uh, application oriented, we can actually make it far, far better than human. So for a specific application, mm -hmm. for a specific task, you can really create an AI model. Again, giving all the hypothetical data set of everything available in the net for application oriented for text classification only if you are care about you can make it like really really perfect the same example actually you can look at from this, this alpha zero right um, mm -hmm. they also add um, like you know it can just beat every single person of them but that is only the specific oriented it can solve only that particular problem so for particular problem we can uh, build a really really good 99 percent accuracy or maybe better than human but in a generalized intelligence way, it, it, I don't think they are not that close yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Any 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 more questions? Um, so hi Raja, uh, this is Vratati yeah. here. So yeah. I have a question that uh, like uh, if you are having uh, say suppose. Uh, I am doing classification uh, with the help of deep uh, learning network model. So yeah. what kind of fine tuning is required or is it like only a pre-processed uh, data which will go inside and then uh, uh, will get the result out? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll answer the question. For deep learning, for sequence, to, uh, sequence operation, we don't do any pre-process. Okay. We don't, we don't, you know, emphasis on, you know, do, you know, if I remove all the stop words, it will, you know, my model may think, let's say if I want to create some sentence, 
you know sentence creation you know structure but if i remove that uh, all the stop words before giving to the sequence to sequence model i am actually telling you know teaching my machine wrongly so for sequence to sequence we don't do the pre process we give the whole input text and regarding the fine tuning the model there is so many parameters first of all the whole architecture is itself you can fine tune you can actually a command ask we were using five layers why not six layers in each layer you are going to use you know seven neuron you know 100 neurons 200 neurons why not two not one that question you can ask so this tuning you can do so it's everything is hyper parameter and which works and there is a pruning is there there is a you know skip network is there and the drop out is there uh, you know these are basic then you can ask okay you are using an adam optimizer why not use something else and you can ask something like you know i don't like the way your optimizer works so when we, it's really really huge that's the reason right the oh. neural network needs a lot of fine tuning uh in terms of hyperparameter also in terms of a model parameter so there is no straight forward answer put five layer this 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 is what because even you know the, the you know let's take the even the uh, latest one any model you can actually argue the author there may be a way to get let's say even if the author is getting 99.5% accuracy you can say i can get 99.6 by adjusting the architecture model itself so mm-hmm. yes fine tuning is really really a big um, process so is it uh, dependent on the data which you are having does yes, it depend yes, on yes. that yes yes it depends on the data also because if you give really good data which can be easily classifiable let's say you are giving me like you know uh, 100 document per categorization if i just look for one word okay let's say one the word chemical that particular word if it is there it belongs to chemical if it is not there it belongs to semiconductor so in that case the data is pure and clean so with that one word i can actually classify i mean uh, just just an example i'm mm. giving so mm. so this kind of information uh, whether your model is performing well or not it actually comes from the how good your data is if your data is clean and nice everything then you will get a so in that regard then we can actually do the pre processing also right like because then we are actually cleaning the data to some extent to avoid this kind of confusing yes, words yes. depends on actually you, what do you want from the model let's say if you are going to consider as a bag of words then you no no uh, like what i am trying to say is that say suppose uh, we use the deep learning model to classify the documents the text mm-hmm. documents mm-hmm. so in a way whether we are giving the raw text or maybe we are giving the features only or maybe a clean pre processed text where maybe we yes. are removing the stop words when okay you are saying the clean pre processed so ha huh, so is very very really good okay the mm-hmm. question is really good that's why i want to answer that mm-hmm. so there the human comes okay you are saying that is clean and clear right mm-hmm. now the data set is 100 so it is easy for you to say what if there is a million document and if i ask you remove the words which are not necessary you cannot do that actually There, yeah, but that's then where, uh, that's where the human bias comes. Human bias also comes, and you know, uh, that's why the whole point neural network. We just give everything, and we are asking it to find instead of let's say, let's say the word chemical is you know irrelevant for the classification. I can directly remove that, telling okay, this is irrelevant. But maybe it is, you know, maybe my system feels it is important. So wherever you feel this pre-process can help your model, you do it. That is recommended. Mm-hmm. but if you are not sure about it then you give it to the model let the model decide what to do so okay. so that's a deep learning approach of you know, yeah that's a deep learning thank you yeah yeah thank you prajati mm-hmm. yeah. any more question hello yeah. uh, raja uh, rohit here yeah yeah yes to be yeah yeah first of all i'd like to thank you for a nice presentation uh, it was yeah. very informative thank you uh, 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 my uh, two questions are there uh, one general question like uh, what do you think uh, uh, this uh, artificial intelligence and neural network uh, mm-hmm. according to your aspect how close uh, it is to the manual uh, efforts like somebody okay. who, who is classifying manually thousand references and uh, machine learning is doing thousand references so mm-hmm. what what closeness uh, this machine learning has achieved uh, right now 
and maybe in future let's say after 5 years maybe it will be uh, like copying the same uh, manual efforts it will be able to do uh, as the uh, technology is growing what do you think mm-hmm. okay it's a really good question rohit actually uh, how good our current model is where we are at in terms of making everything automated it's really good question so current model you know so far we have tried we have get some like 70 to 75% close to the human categorization uh, given the uh, the document is verified you know when we verify with the human that's what we are getting uh, to make it actually fully automated we are still not close to 100% but in 5 years or so we will be very close to 90 to 95% i'm sure because there is a, the only problem is the general model has to be learned from all the patterns so the number of patterns is keep on increasing so our model has to retrain on the new one and the trained model also has to keep track of all the information uh, about the hidden patterns also so that is one of the problem actually we came across the model convergence is not happening meaning if it is not converging means it's not able to actually find the particular thing you know which is you know human are able to do it so in that sense we are not that close yet but in future work i think it, it we, we will be very close thank you thank you raja yeah. another uh, another question is uh, uh, the most challenging part in the patent uh, industry see mm. uh, we have patents from different uh, countries and jurisdictions and they will mm. be in different languages so yeah. uh, do you think our model should be trained in all the languages or if we trained in let's say in english language uh, uh, it will give you the uh, same result uh, okay this one also we had based on of the things because for the if the patent was in korean patent all the patents are actually translated by machine translated when the machine is translating the uh, patent result like in a english terms uh, let's say the korean patent translated to english is actually different from actual english written patent so if we train on only this and the model performance and the translated patent will be decreased so currently we are not doing that you know generalized one but in future it will be really good you know we will have better result if we do it for separate separate language and we just uniform it with like an ensemble model then that should work yeah thank you yeah thank you rohit yeah any other questions or or if you have any questions later you can just you know um, twitter you can follow me or us or you can just email to us so yeah yeah thanks raja uh, i think we'll uh, wrap it up now uh, thank you all to attend uh, today's session if you have any questions uh, please feel free to write to us or reach out to any one of us